As embroiderers, we like to be able to see a design in actual thread colors before stitching. I'm working in Composer, and this lesson also applies to changing colors in Digitizer. So I've opened a new blank document. You can see the design colors bar down here at the bottom. It actually has two rows of colors. So if all your colors don't fit on a row, you'll see this little scroll bar, and you can scroll through your colors that way. This is the default colors bar when you install Hatch 3. If I hover over one of the color swatches, you'll see that these are all isochord colors. This color is the current color, or the active color. It's the one that will be used if you create anything. So I'm in Composer. If I create lettering, it's going to be in this color. If I'm in Digitizer and I use any of the digitizing tools, it's going to be in whatever color is active here. I can select a different color, by clicking it or using the pick tool. We'll see the pick tool shortly because we can pick from other colors available on our screen. Now when you open a design, it comes in with whatever colors were assigned to that design. So this design has no unused colors. And I know that because it has this little blue box in the upper right hand corner. That tells me it's a used color. In this design, color number five is the current color. And as I hover over these, you can see these are Madeira Classics. We have three places that we can work with color in Composer and Digitizer. If I go to the Sequence Docker, I'm on the Colors tab here, and I'm just going to minimize those colors, and you can see all the colors used in the design, and you can see the objects that are colored that color. We can see that this color is used twice. Several of these colors are used multiple times. It might be easier to see that on the Information Docker on the Thread Colors tab, and here you can see the whole color sequence. Notice that color number one in our sewing sequence is actually color number six down here. Color number two is color number one, so this order has nothing to do with how it sews. These just get added in whatever order we add them in. I'm going to close that docker, and I'm going to open up the Threads docker. We can open up the thread stocker either by clicking on its tab over here or by clicking on the button here. Now currently, my thread stocker is set to Sulky. This is set to Madeira Classic. We do have an Add Design Colors button, and if I click that and we hover over those, these are isochord colors. So when you click the Add button, it's adding colors from your default template. The colors that are shown in the design are whatever the designer set and saved with that design. The colors here are the colors that will be added if you double click from here. So if I double click that, I can add a few colors. And now we can see that those are sulky colors. If I want to change this color to a sulky color, maybe I want it to be a brighter yellow. All I do is select a color down here and single click on this color. So if I want to change that to this color, single click. Now when I do it this way, it's going to change everything that was assigned to this color swatch on here. But suppose I just wanted to change this one to a different color. I can select it and single click, and now it's both added it to the colors bar and it's changed my color here. I can hide any unused colors. If I undo, do Control Z, take that back to yellow, and we'll unhide our colors. Now I can use the Remove button. The Remove button will remove any unused colors from this side. But because before I had that red one out there and it was used, it didn't see any unused colors beyond my last used color. If I bring that back, and I want to get rid of the unused colors, I'll click Discard. Now currently we have some Madeira colors, and we have some Sulky colors. What if I want these to all be Sulky colors? Or what if I use a different thread brand altogether? Let's try that. I'll go up here to the Select Thread Charts. Remove this, I can either select it and click the arrow button here, and that puts it back in this list, or I can just double click it and I can find a new color brand. Let's pick something different. I'll use Hummingworth, and I can 
select it and add it, or I can double click it. I can actually add several brands here. And we'll just go with that one. My thread chart has changed up here, but these are still the colors that I had before, Sulky and Madeira Classic. If I want to change all of these colors to my new thread chart, I can click the Match All button here. And now if we hover over these, we can see these are Hemingworth. In Composer and Digitizer, we can actually access individual objects. So you saw me change this one color here. I could also change colors here. For example, this color gets used several times, but maybe I want to change that to a new color. And now we've changed just those to that color, and this other color has remained that same dark color. So we have two more tools down here. We have the Pick tool. And if I want to pick a color, let's say that I have a lot of colors on my colors bar and I don't know what color that is, I can use the Pick tool and click it, and now that color has become the active color. And you can see how the active color changes as I use the Pick tool. The Paint Bucket tool can be used to apply color in here, and it will apply whatever is in your active color. Maybe we'll make this the active color, and I'll click the Paint Bucket, and I'll change its body to bright green. Now, I want to caution you about changing thread brands. There's no universal color chart out there. If you have a certain green in one color chart and you need it to match another green in another chart, you may not get an exact match. And depending on your design, it may not make that big a difference. But some designs, for example, realistic designs or photo stitch designs where you need really the right colors to make it look right, you may have to get different colors from different thread brands. Doesn't mean you have to carry the whole line, but you may want to get those specific colors so that you have a good stitch out. And remember, what we see on the screen is going to be different than what we sew. And part of that has to do with screen colors versus actual thread colors and whatever fabric we're stitching on. So whatever threads I pick down here, I always check it against a real thread chart to make sure that that's really what I want.